What's poppin' people? It's Dante, currently going for a walk here in Fairmount Park, Philadelphia. Check out that looming tree. We have the change of seasons. It's starting to get chilly in Philly. Got the winter coat on. Yeah, just going for a nice walk in nature. This is where I thrive. And so today I wanted to do a bit of a deep dive into health, nutrition, and fitness and just discuss my journey and talk about a few things that I think are really important that have helped me and maybe they will help you. I just genuinely want to give advice that I wish I knew 10 years ago when I started my fitness journey when I was 18, right? So when I was 18, I started going to the gym. Now I'm 28 years old and I think I figured out the key ingredient that we maybe neglect when getting started in our fitness journey and that is nutrition. And so I remember in the gym doing all the traditional weightlifting techniques, you know, the chest press, shoulder press, deadlifting, you know, using dumbbells, doing all sorts of techniques and lifting, um, heavy weights, you know, feeling good about it, you know, spending lots of time in the gym, maybe an hour some days, and going for runs afterwards, and like really putting in a lot of work early on, which I think is something that maybe everyone starts with, right? Just going really hard in the gym itself, but we maybe neglect the nutritional aspect of fitness and, and health in general. And so I just wanted to share how I have changed over the years. And so in the beginning, you know, I would lift heavy, go for runs. And then afterwards I would go and get a burger and I would eat this greasy burger. You know, I would feel good about myself. I'd have a side of fries. You know, I wouldn't really think about the sauce, right? Thinking about ketchup and you know, all of the works and I would eat the burger thinking, oh, I'm getting protein right now. But uh, you know, there's also the carbohydrates and there's all these weird funky things in the sauces. And so ever since eliminating all of the different food groups, even considering the time where, I remember actually, I would do these like pre-packaged Tupperware containers and I would get like seven of them for the week and I would fill it with chicken and rice and broccoli. And you know, chicken, you know, when you think about the food, right? There's that saying like, you are what you eat, right? It's like, do you wanna be a little chicken shit? No, no, pecking around on the ground. We want to have the power of a bison. We want to have the power of an ox, of a bull, of a big fucking cow. <laughs> I, I, think, um, I think beef as the primary source of protein in our diet is, is where the gains are made, right? Even consider the word cholesterol right and how this word has been demonized and how this idea of cholesterol um you know being something to avoid right cholesterol derives from sterile which ultra which ultimately means steroid and so no no we do not want to consume steroids we're not going to go down this path of being these super jacked buff you know big booby guys you know the funny thing is like these guys that do like um steroids all you can tell that they have st uh, they take steroids when you look at their chest if you see a man with like big boobies they, they probably do steroids um, and so we'll we'll do the natural steroids which is uh, cholesterol right cholesterol meaning steroid okay and so the more cholesterol we consume the better right think of beef ground beef steaks um, I round roast, you know, all of these delicious things that you can just throw in a crock pot or put on a cast iron pan with some olive oil or butter, you know, beef liver being very high in cholesterol, something that you should consume, I believe, once per week. This is the steroid. This is the thing that will give you that insane feeling of vigor and strength each and every morning when you wake up. You know, eating more organ meats, eating more beef, right? Neglecting the rice, neglecting this sort of chicken and rice weird, uh, you know, like, like food, you know, pattern that these like steroid bodybuilder types typically go down um we do it all natural we go for that grass-fed beef right and the thing with the carnivore diet is when you eliminate you know thinking of the broccoli that i used to eat i mean what is bro like broccoli doesn't do anything for you right a lot of the vegetables thinking of even spinach have certain things within them that actually can 
be bad for you. Uh, you know, thinking of oxalates, right? We don't want to consume certain plants. You know, I'm looking around at these plants. Nothing here looks appetizing, right? But the cow eats the grass for you, and then you eat the cow, right? And so life goes around this way. And so yeah, firstly, you know, just getting this out there because I think that if you're looking to increase your strength, if you're looking to lose fat, gain muscle, which is ultimately the goal of anyone who's getting into bodybuilding or trying to get into health and fitness, you should definitely consider the carnivore diet as the standard to start with. I think that when you go into this sort of like uh, weightlifting journey, really hone in on nutrition firstly. You know, technique, you know, doing different weightlifting techniques, um, lifting heavy, like all this stuff is the easy part. The hard part is staying disciplined with nutrition, right? Because there's so many yummy foods in the world. But when you strip down to the very bare bones of just consuming beef, not only are you gonna feel better, stronger, healthier, you're gonna look better. You're gonna shed fat instantly. You're gonna have a low body fat percentage. Your muscles will be more defined and you will inevitably increase your strength over time adopting a carnivore diet. And so I find that by really remaining disciplined with this um, sort of guideline of just sticking to just red meat, beef, and no chicken, right? Just don't even eat it. Um, this is what's gonna make the biggest difference on your journey, truly. I mean, if you want, you could add fruits, you could add certain vegetables like kale, but personally, I don't add anything just because I don't need it. I don't feel like it makes a difference. Um, if anything, I notice if I have a piece of fruit, I actually wind up pooping more the next day and then feeling hungrier. And so I think that when you actually only consume meat, you poop less, also you don't fart, which is funny. And then what that means is you're holding all of the nutrition on your body, in your, in your musculature, right? You're actually fortifying the flesh on your body when you consume the flesh and it's not necessarily being excreted every single morning in an, in an insane abundance, right? When you consume fiber, that's the inevitable outcome. And so, yeah, first and foremost, nutrition, get that out of the way. I mean, try it, you know, maybe, I, personally, it's changed my life two years now doing the carnivore diet, it's like, wow. This is, this is like bliss. Um, you know, you just feel so full throughout the day. The satiation's insane. You never have cravings. You're never hungry. You wind up going around the city and you smell these foods in the Reading Terminal when you're going to the marketplace. And it all smells gross. You know, all these greasy, sloppy things that people eat in Philly, like cheesesteaks and the cheeseburgers and blah, blah, blah. It all doesn't actually appeal to you anymore. You can look at these pieces of candy, these ultra processed sweets and things at the bakery. And it actually puts a bad taste in your mouth, right? It actually looks less appetizing when you start adopting a carnivore diet because you're just so full of energy. And so I say, try it out elimination style, right? It's all about eliminating all of the junk. And so, yeah, I fast one meal a day. I'm not dependent on all square, you know, three square meals a day kind of nonsense because I'm just full of power. I don't need it. I just don't, I have the power of a bison, right? And that's where we want to be. Okay, so now when it comes to weight training, I actually find that simplifying the workflow is the best way to go about this thing, right? If you go into the gym and you try to do all of these different compound movements like the chest press, right? Thinking of laying on your back and press, doing the bench press or even like um, traditional squat, you know, you put the squat bar up, you kind of, you know, you do the traditional squatting technique. You know, these things are, 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 are actually taking up too much time in the gym. And this is something I'm really big on is saving time. And I think a lot of people actually wind up wasting time when they're in the gym. You know, when you go into the gym, you want to get in and get out. I find that actually by eliminating all of these compound movements, whether it's the bench press, the squat on the squat bar, or even deadlifting, which I think is still good. I actually think the best and optimal workflow is to just go for calisthenics, honestly. If you go in with a weighted vest on, like I've been doing recently with this 40 pound uh, plate carrier, and you hit pull-ups, you can hit chin-ups, you can do push-ups, you know, you can do dips, and then I use dumbbells for curls or lateral raises for my shoulders, just simple movements that go a long way, I find to be 
the most optimal routine, right? So when I do squats, I like to do these pistol squats where I do it with one leg, or I'll do regular squats using my weighted vest on. Um, you can even hold a plate. You know, there's a variety of ways that you can train your legs. I think actually even by simply walking and moving with the weighted vest on is training your legs. And actually by adopting a barefoot lifestyle, by removing your shoes and wearing the Vibram Five Finger ELX model shoes, these will actually strengthen your legs. These will strengthen your feet, your back, your spine, your posture. And ultimately what I've realized with health and fitness is the ultimate determining factor for your strength is your grip, right? Thinking of your hand and the way that you can hold onto a bar or pick up two heavy dumbbells. My favorite technique is the farmer's walk. So if I hold two heavy dumbbells to my side, head up, shoulders back, and simply walk out these two dumbbells, I find that this is strengthening my grip. This is strengthening my posture, my back, my spine, etc. And I always make sure when doing any movement or any lift to, to sort of flex my core, to focus on my abdomen, to focus on the muscle that is holding my whole posture together, that being your abdom abdominal area, right? And so when you're doing any lift, to do it with intention and intensity um, is more critical than banging out a lot of reps. And, and, and honestly, I spend 10 to 15 minutes in the gym doing a full body routine. And this is something that I prefer, right? Because in the past, I remember doing the traditional workflow of, what was it, push, pull, push, pull, or whatever, push, pull, legs, right? push, pull legs, push, pull legs, push, pull legs. And I would do all the different types of movements for the different days and really be routine and have that sort of Tupperware container of chicken and rice. And you know, it's all nonsense, honestly. I think a lot of fitness, um, you know, when people get into fitness, they, they go down, you know, this path to being so, um, what is the word, like regimented and, it just becomes boring and bland and you know when I hit the gym and I recommend if you can to set up a home gym like going to the gym I can't even remember the last time I went to a gym um, you know you can simply purchase a pair of gymnastic rings and throw them up in a tree you know when I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Zambia Africa I did that right I was off the grid and I would just throw these two gymnastic rings into a tree trunk and then I would do my whole routine by simply using my body weight and a tree right you can use um, you know I, <laughs> I I find that like um, you can use your surroundings, right? You can use anything. When I was in Israel, I was volunteering on a kibbutz and because it was a farm, they had all these tractor tires and I remember rolling one out to the basketball court and I would shoot some hoops. I actually had a skateboard. I would skateboard a little bit and I would flip a tractor tire around, right? I think the point is you don't need to spend an hour in the gym doing every little minute movement for this muscle and that muscle just get in there and do a full body routine and get out. I mean, live a healthy, uh, 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 non-sedentary lifestyle, right? Don't sit down. You know, the ultimate um, defeat is when I feel tired, if I feel like I need to sit down. And, you know, for two years now, it sounds hilarious and crazy, I haven't sat down. You know, I just keep moving and I keep standing throughout the day. And I think this is what changed in me since adopting the carnivore diet. I have too much power. I have too much vigor. I have to let it out. You know, sometimes I'll just randomly drop and do push-ups because I'm just so energetic. And it really has to do with transforming the food that I consume, eliminating alcohol, eliminating drugs, smoking, anything bad, just eliminate it. Um, and then, <laughs> you know, in terms of feeling with feeling so vital and feeling like you have all this energy and power you got to get to bed right setting your circadian rhythm you know getting the sun in the morning catching the sunset catching the sunrise getting the sun in your eyes you know getting more sunlight you know these simple things go a long way this is what sets your body in motion this is what sets you on your natural biological clock where i'm no longer a slave to time right i go to bed at the time my body feels best and that is around 8 p.m. you know I go to bed early I wake up early I'm rising with the Sun I'm sleeping with the sunset you know there's something about this uh, lifestyle that is very natural 
You know, I find it to be this primal lifestyle, adopting a sort of rigor in my day, sort of like I'm a hunter, right? Think of a hunter in uh, 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 times past. <laughs> what is the right word? You know, uh, uh, imagine being a hunter going a full day without food in your belly, looking for the prey, killing the prey, and then feasting in the evening. I think that we need to stop eating all these protein snacks. You know, these little protein bars, these cliff bars. I remember eating these cliff bars all the time when I would come out of the gym. I would have a protein shake, right? Which is essentially just all this sugar and shit inside. And then I would have a a cliff bar or a protein bar and it was you know, the, you know these energy bars and all this kind of nonsense that is just marketed to us to 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 be consumers but we want to be producers and i think that to return to this primal lifestyle what's uh, what's amazing to me is i'm less of a consumer now and i think that is where we want to be not dependent on these little snacks and little like what are you a freaking squirrel eating acorns throughout the day you know what do you what do you need nuts and berries and all this kind of shit for i mean really i mean just start to uh, start living in line with nature right i believe in nature we are hunters yes we are omnivores we can eat both plants and animals but let's be real you can't get the same energy and vigor from eating a bowl of legumes is that the word legumes and beans that, that, that you can from eating a small piece of steak i mean it's obvious um so uh yeah i do have a simple lifestyle a simple fitness routine I just get in, I get out. Push-ups, pull-ups, chin-ups, dips, curls. I like the Zotman curls because you do your forearms a little bit. I'll do the lateral raises for shoulders. Nothing intense with pushing. Nothing on my back, laying at the bench. I don't do that anymore. I do have my dead, uh, my, my barbell set up right now. I do deadlift still from time to time, but it's really not something that I feel is natural. You know, what feels more natural to me is pulling myself up on a pull-up bar. You know, I'm, I'm six foot tall, so when I get down and I do a deadlift, I need to do a sumo deadlift style so I can get down low enough to pick it up. It's just less natural. And so ever since adopting this 40 pound plate carrier, when I do squats, when I go for walks, I'm working my legs, right? I find that the 40, pl the 40 pound plate carrier, it's making the 10 to 15 minute routine that I do way more intense. It's way more intense with the 40 pounds on my back and, and my chest. And so, yeah, maybe the moral of the story is, you know, keep it simple. Focus on grip strength, farmer's walk, chest open, uh, uh, shoulders back, you know, you know, strengthening the core. You know, abs, we all want to show our six pack, right? We want to lose fat, gain muscle. Go carnivore, try it out. And, and focus on that muscle at your core when doing all the different lifting techniques. The problem is, you know, your abs aren't going to be visible when you're eating all this other junk. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta eliminate it, honestly. And so, yeah, um, there's really no need to do crunches. There's no need to do all these silly things. Sometimes I'll do L sits on the pull up bar just to strengthen my core. But to be honest with you, abs are made in the kitchen. And so, yeah, if you wanna, if you want to look like a Greek, like the thing is like, we could all look like Greek gods. It's so easy. It's so easy to look like a Greek God. You just got to be disciplined. You have to put in the work. You have to do it every single day without excuses. Right. And I think that over time compounding all of this time and then compounding the amount of meat that you consume each, each day, it, it's going to, it's going to show in the results, you know? So I've gone from doing the carnivore diet initially, I was eating one pound, two pounds. Now I eat, now I eat three pounds of beef each day and I can eat five pounds if I want, you know, some days I'll eat five pounds. I can eat a lot more now because I'm getting stronger. I'm losing fat and I'm gaining more muscle. And so my, my, my simple message is to keep it simple, stupid, Stop with all of the, you know, micro macros. Stop with all the burning calories and cardio. You don't need to go for runs. You can just go for a nice walk in nature. You know, keep it light. Wear a weighted vest. Do calisthenics. And uh, yeah, try your best, right? Some days you don't feel up to it, but you still go in there and you just do a couple reps and you do your thing, you know? If you don't feel great, 
to the next day, you know, still do it, still go into the gym, still try something. Um, and I think that's the key, it's consistency. And, you know, I like to do some simple yoga stretches every single day, stretching my legs, my back, you know, I think having a good flexible body is also what's gonna help you when you go in there and you do your weight training. So yeah, do some stretches before you hit the gym, do some stretches before you go to bed. I think stretching at least twice per day is good. Um, and so that's really it, I mean, just my, my thoughts, um, maybe it helps one other person, right? I, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share some of the things that I wish I knew before I, uh, you know, 10 years ago kind of thing. You know, I wish I knew this initially. You know, I, I went down the fitness rabbit hole and I tried all the different things and um, I haven't seen the most insane, like the, the insane results that I see now since simply going carnivore and doing more calisthenics, honestly. It seems to be um, it seems to be the simplest workflow possible. You know, I, I like to go into the gym and enjoy myself. You know, I enjoy lifting out, uh, lifting weights. You know, I enjoy uh, my time, that quick 10 to 15 minutes uh, spurt of, you know, going all out. You know, that's that's to me like a, a peaceful, meditative place. And so I like to train with this kendama. It's this wooden kendama. It's a Japanese skill toy. And um, I, I warm up that way. You know, I get my blood rushing. I get my body moving. But there's this connection between my mind and my body that I'm training with this kendama. And I find that to be my meditative, happy place. It's during these walks in nature. And it's during my time in the gym. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean... Maybe I covered all the stuff that I needed to. Um, yeah. Cholesterol is a natural steroid. You know? Is Dante on steroids? Yes. I'm on, I'm on beef liver once per week. I think once per week is good, right? That's what I usually do. I have beef liver once per week. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and if, uh, if, you see, if you see a guy with like these big boulder boobies on his chest, yeah, he's, he's probably on steroids. Look at any ancient Greek sculpture. Like when I was in um, Florence, right? Looking at the sculpture and the physique of Hercules, of David, of Achilles, of all these ancient Greek heroes, you know, there is something about the chest size that does set things into perspective, right? Like if you look at Hercules, he has strong legs, a strong core, um, you know, strong arms, but his chest, it's not, it's not necessarily looking like these chests that you see nowadays in, in like Hollywood movies with like The Rock and like these guys that like shake their boobies around. You know, that's, that's a new like steroid aesthetic and we don't want that. We want to sculpt our bodies sort of, um, like an ancient Greek god, like an ancient Greek demigod, okay? That's the goal, demigod goals. The goal is not these crazy, weird, steroid, grotesque bodies. Um, actually, one of my friends just texted me. He sent me a, a video of some guy, like L L Leroy, what's his name? Like Lenny, Lenny, Lenny died. Some guy, Lenny, he showed me. I mean, rest in peace, the guy, was a hundred percent a steroid abuser you can just see it so let's not uh, kill ourselves here let's let's uh, strengthen our bodies and um, become like a big Lenny that was his name big Lenny look <laughs> RIP big Len I mean I don't even know the guy was he a meme or something I know I'm making light of a situation but I mean come on it's it's not good to do these uh steroids and things so yeah, just uh keep it natural eat more cholesterol <laughs> don't eat cheerios